It's good. So good. Actually, Sheila asked me what I was going to preach on tonight. I said, I don't know. And uh, I really probably shouldn't have said it that way because God's given me about 10 different messages to preach. And uh, if you all don't mind, we'll just stay to 10 o'clock tonight. And I'll get on every one of those for a little bit.
There's a lot of things to discuss tonight. One of the first things is God loves you. Preparing tonight, I felt the Lord just say, tell my people that I love them. Because sometimes you get down, you get out, you get in trouble, you have things go wrong, and you think God doesn't care about you. The word for you tonight is He loves you. He cares about you, and He wants the best for you. Everything that you have going on in your life, He wants the best for you. We get in the way, we may mess things up sometimes, but God wants the best for us. And if we'll follow Him, we'll see better things happen in our lives. You've heard of rhinos, haven't you? <clears throat> rhinos? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Republican in name only? Rhino? Republican in name only? In other words, they say they're a Republican, but they don't act like a Republican. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> I'm not going to preach a political message. But I just wanted to say that because that brings up the next question. I want to know, are you a Christian in name only? Think about it. Are you a Christian in name only? What do you do when you walk out the store? What do you do? If we are Christians... Out there, they will know us by our love. Yeah. They will know us by our love. That's how you know a Christian. You, you can tell who they are by their love. I've got uh, so many things I want to say. I'm going to have to cut it down to just a few. But I want to start off Matthew 12, 37. It says, by, For by your words you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. Uh -huh. By your words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. Mm -hmm. In other words, what you say makes a difference. Yeah. It makes a difference what you say. Yeah. You can say good, you can say bad, Perfect. but it all makes a difference. And depending upon who you talk to, I was busy Friday. I had waited 40 minutes on the phone trying to talk to the Department of Labor. 40 minutes on hold. I got the call. And I'm talking to this lady, very nice lady, by the way, which that's, that's a blessing in itself. I could understand her. Very nice lady. Anyway, here I am, I'm about 20 minutes into my call, and I'm always thinking about, I'm, I've been waiting, I waited 40 minutes to get on this line here, and I'm just about half, probably a third of the way done with what I need to say, and here I am all, you know, I'm thinking about what I'm doing. My little granddaughter comes walking in the door. What did I do? Not what I should have done. Shame on me. <laughs> Connie was in the other room quite a ways away. In her kitchen. I said, get her out of here. Well, my granddaughter 
and she's three, um, you know, th four years old. My granddaughter, it hurt her feelings, and she ran over into the bedroom and she just cried and she cried and she cried. When I got off the phone, my wife explained all that to me. <coughs> well, <clears throat> what I'm saying is it's important what you say. Is it okay to say the wrong thing just because you're all in a bother? Now be careful now. <laughs> be careful. You asked. <laughs> you're right. It's not. You can't say just whatever you want to say. You need to be saying things in love. I love that little girl. Oh my, I love that little girl. She's so precious. I had my mind on business that was frustrating, very frustrating. I've been not wanting to make that call for about two to three weeks now, and I finally just bit the ball, bullet and made the call. <clears throat> anyway, I can give you all the excuses in the world, but what I did was wrong. I apologized to her, and she loves me today. She, <laughs> She said, Grandpa, I love you. And they left today. But <clears throat> point being, I ought not let something like that come out of my mouth. Okay. <clears throat> point. By your words you will be acquitted. By your words you will be condemned. That's Matthew 12, 37. So it matters what you say. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit there. Now, if you speak bad things to people, it hurts them deeply. You can speak a lot of good things, and it only takes one time to say something bad to destroy a relationship. And it almost takes forever to rebuild that relationship. How do I know that? Let's say personal experience again. Proverbs 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, that goes a long ways. We can talk about my inabilities, my inefficiencies, my lack, but that's not the part we want to focus on. We want to focus on talking good and preaching good good, speaking good to those people that are around us. When we, I've, I've heard people talk to the kids and say, you're not worth two cents. Say directly to the kids. You're not worth two cents. You're never going to amount to anything. And these kids, they grow up hearing that all the time. And they say, well, I'm not, I, I can't do anything. I'm a, I'm a no good nothing. And then I hear some other people that have done the right thing and said, oh, honey, you're so, you're so good. You made a mistake, but that's okay. You didn't mean to. And I, I've heard that. And, of course, you know, we kind of get in a place where how far do you go with this child psychology stuff, you know? And I don't want to go there, but what I want to say is it's very important what we say to other yeah. people. So, death and life are in the power of the tongue. When we are praying for people, very important. I'm going to get on that here in just a minute. Now, I'm not talking to anybody specifically here. I'm talking to every one of you. And I'm going to work on your head just a little bit. You need to think. You need to think. People don't think. All the time they don't think. And I'm going to try to read some scripture here that will help you to think. And I'm not trying to say anything specifically to anybody. I'm trying to say what the word says to everybody. And don't get me wrong here. That's what I'm wanting to do. And I think it's very important that we pray properly. 
we have been raised to pray incorrectly. And we continually say the wrong things when we pray. Let's, for example, uh, God is not a monument. He's not like Buddha. He's not a monument that you can just say something to and then you go back and say it again and say it again and say it again, whatever you want to do. God is a real person. The Holy Spirit is a real person. The Holy Spirit, now whether you understand it or not, the Holy Spirit is right here, right now, and he's living in each side of us. So as we say things, the Holy Spirit responds. Amen. And if we say wrong things, the Holy Spirit's saying, what? What? That's what's going on. So it's very important that we say right things because we want to be productive in our prayer lives. We want to see people healed. We want to see good things happen. And if you pray things the wrong way, you're annulling another good prayer. We come up here and pray. I, back up. I've heard people praying that actually annulled the prayer that I prayed. And they've done that because of disbelief. They've done it because of not understanding the scripture. They do it because they don't believe. We have many scriptures in the Bible that talks about believing. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to get on to Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And this is to help you to understand the way we need to pray. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Now think about it. They said right here, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So in other words, we speak to God as we pray and we're communicating directly with Him. Now, when we have corporate prayer, that's a little bit different sometimes. Because we pray in a sense that we're including everybody with us as we pray. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And we've got to go by what the Word says. And so, <clears throat> when, when we pray, we don't want to be as the hypocrites do. Uh, we don't want to stand out there in the open and say, look at me pray. And I'm not saying anybody here is doing that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we don't want to do that. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, where thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions. What does that mean? Don't keep praying for the same thing over and over. Exactly. Vain repetitions. So we continually pray for the same thing over and over again. As the heathen do, for they think they shall not be heard for their much speaking. People pray, and uh, I've heard people pray for 10, 15 minutes. And when got done with the prayer, they hadn't said a thing. And I'm not saying that it's not, you, you should not pray. I'm just saying 
you need to be praying to God and not praying for people to hear what you're saying. And uh, when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. And here's the reason why. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. We don't need to God touch this guy. God touch this guy. God touch this guy. God touch this guy. Now, true, some people are a little slow to catch on, so you might have to say it a time or two for some people. But the point I'm trying to make is vain repetitions. Remember this, unless the person you're praying for needs it, you don't need to say that same thing over and over again. Because God actually heard you say it before you said it. God knows what's going to be said. In fact, now that's another sermon. We can't go there tonight. Uh, in the spirit. Uh, God knows what you're going to say. And he understands how you're saying it and why you're saying it. And he's wanting you to be obedient and do as the word tells you. Now there's a lot of passages in scripture that tell you how to pray. And we can't get through all that tonight, but I I want to uh, I, I want to I want to touch on one little thing just for a little bit. And again, I'm not trying to scold anybody. When I started thinking about the right way to pray, I started being a little afraid to pray because I was going to say the wrong thing. And really, when you start thinking about it, you get this in your mind, you do start thinking about what you're saying, and then you start saying, am I saying the right thing? I need to say it right. And we really do. We need to be able to get God's response. Uh, we need to say it in the right way. Let's just, let's just use one Everybody's going to throw me out of the church for saying this. <clears throat> let your conversation, uh, Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Matthew 28, it says... <clears throat> Uh, on uh, Matthew 28 verse 20 it says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you and lo I am with you always even unto the end of the world amen we ask the Lord to be with us constantly continually and, and I, I ask you this question. Do you think that the Lord is not with us? Do you think that the Lord is not with us? The Word just told us in two different passages, and i got two or three more I'm going to read here, but it basically says He's with us. Yeah. He's with us always. When we're here, when we're out there, wherever we go, God is with us. If we feel like it, if we don't, God's with us. And we pray redundant prayers. What's redundant mean? Same thing over and over. Repeat Same thing over and over. And it basically about means that doesn't amount to anything. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> After you've said it a few times, it, it becomes redundant. It, it means it's without meaning anymore. Uh, so we have to be careful how we pray. And let me read a couple other scriptures here, <clears throat> talking 
along those same lines in Hebrews 4, verse, uh, I'm going to read 14 through 16. It says, Seeing then ye, that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In time of need, God's always there. The grace is there for us. Uh, and this one right here in 2 Timothy I'm going to read <clears throat> talks about uh, a spirit of fear. And today with the coronavirus and all this business going around, there are people that are just scared to death. And 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So, and there's other places that uh, let you know that the fear is the opposite of faith. So if you're going to have faith, you can't have fear. Faith is one thing. Fear is another. If you have faith in God, the fear should be gone. I remember uh, back in 2009, I was laying on the... Uh, I was, I was in the hospital room and uh, I was getting ready to go in for open heart surgery. I was laying there and I had absolutely no fear of dying. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely no fear. I had peace in my heart. I wasn't concerned. A little apprehensive about the what they're going to you know, pull my heart out, you know. Apprehensive about the pain I was going to be in. But I had no fear of death. And I had the faith that God had something for me to do and he wasn't done with me yet. But even without knowing that, today I could say I could be in that same position today and not have fear because God is with me. And he's with you too. And he is speaking to you all the time but you're not listening. I, I have trouble listening because I'm with God. No amens on that now. But I do. And you know, uh, I've heard the Lord quiet me a few times. It's my time to talk. And I purposely try, as in my prayer time, Try to stop and listen to what God wants to tell me. Because he is wanting to speak with you. But anyway, let's move right on. Um, <coughs> it's important what we say. Because we, as a body of believers here, are on the verge of of the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And as we see people come in to get saved, you need to be able to pray for people effectively and not pray redundant prayers. I, God gave me this so I know nobody is going to be um, offended and it is not my intention to offend anybody in here. My intention is to speak the word that God's given me and my understanding of the scriptures that we might all be on the same page so that we can see and speak to people correctly, directly, and help them to understand what they need to be saved. And uh, different people require different things that need to be said to them. And that's the reason we have the Holy Spirit, because he does that. In uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 26, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and 
shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Who believes God, God's word? Amen. Anybody in here? Yeah. Amen. I'm just reading scripture. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I got on the road to this stuff here about well, a couple years ago. And I am thinking about the New Testament church. How they went out, laid hands on the sick, and they recovered. Matthew 10, 1, it, it, the direction was given to the disciples to go heal the sick. Matthew 10, 8, basically the same thing. Each time, it was also said, and preached the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, as we are healing people, it's important to, for to spread the good news that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For some people, it's closer than others. Back in 1990, my daughter had a friend live in Piedmont, Sandy Faulkner. She got out. She was supposed to be at home. She got out, went out partying with the kids. They went to Annapolis, come back, had a car wreck, and it killed her. The day of the Lord was right then for her. And that's what we're, what we're up against today. We don't know who is going to walk out of this building tonight and is going to come back next Sunday or the next appointed time, whatever it is. But... I'm not worried about the people in here tonight. I am worried about those people out there that aren't in here. And those people, there's going to be somebody die tonight. Somewhere, somewhere, somebody is dying tonight. And it might be somebody we know, and it might be somebody we don't know, but you can count on it, every one of us had somebody to die in the last year that we knew. Yeah. We... Are, I have sensed this for ever since I've been coming here. I have sensed a great and mighty move of the Holy Spirit in this place. And I know that it's growing. And I know that people are receiving and people are accepting. And I know this is not an exciting message. But it's a message that's got to be preached because we want effectiveness. Amen. As children of God, we want to be effective witnesses, and we want to see people saved. We want to see them healed. We want to see them delivered. We want to see the New Testament church active in this place, and I believe it. Amen. There's a lot of other things to go with it. Uh, you got to believe and not doubt, and that's another sermon in itself. I'm not going with tonight, but. Uh, There's another thing here in Mark uh, 11, 24. Let me follow on through here. Therefore I say unto you, what things whatsoever. So then again. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Key word there, believe. And uh, I'd like to get on another message, don't doubt, but Anyway, the key message tonight is believe. We have to be believers. Yeah. How many churches do you go into and they call themselves believers, but they're not really even believers. They don't believe it. They'll, they'll come up and be prayed for, and then they'll walk out the door and say, oh, i got to go to the doctor tomorrow. After they've been prayed for, I'm, I'm dying. And I'm, I'm saying, I, I, 
didn't didn't do me any bit of good here. Uh, you know. And again, everybody is different. There's different reasons for everything. And some people can accept the healing right there on the spot. Other people can't. And we can only do what God tells us to do. We have faith. We believe. We pray. We lay hands on the sick that they might be healed. But if the person does not have the faith for it, they can't, they won't receive. It. And so it takes two people, unless you're operating in the gifts of the spirit. If you're operating in the gifts of the spirit, then then you just lay hands on somebody and they're healed, whether they want to be healed or not. But uh, I've even I, I know I've, I've heard of situations where people have been healed that way. And they didn't keep their healing because they didn't believe. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, I was listening to a lady preach one, uh, one day. And she said symptoms are to sickness like temptation is to sin. I thought that was quite the statement. And I believe that's true. When you have a symptom, you need to rebuke it. Amen. When you just have a symptom, not when it's full blown, but when you have the symptom, yeah. you got to rebuke it, and you got to say, "I am healed in Jesus' name." I'm getting a little away from my central thought tonight there on that, but anyway, uh, that's another message. One of the other messages that I'd like to preach tonight, but uh, so. Uh, Going on here, verse 25, I think, uh, is where I'm at. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Verse 26 says, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So, if we have... Un, we have unforgiveness in our heart. We have ought against our brother or our sister. You can't expect God to work through that. You got to get yourself straightened out. Get yourself straightened out, and then God can use you. And um, that's the third sermon I'd like to talk about is in the Spirit again, which I like to talk about being in the Spirit. John 4, 48 says, Then said Jesus unto them, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. There's many people see signs and wonders, and they don't believe them. You know, we are living in a day and age where if you listen to hear a politician say something, what's the first thing you say? It's a lie. I can't believe it. Isn't that, isn't that normal? If you hear a politician speak, that's normally what you're thinking is they're probably not telling the truth, or at least not the whole truth. Maybe there's a little bit in there. But, and of course, there's exceptions to every rule. But for the most part, we've been trained not to believe what people say. And so the truth is told, and you don't believe the truth because we've been taught to disbelieve everything else. Well, that's kind of like kind of like the way it is in church too. Uh, we get to believing things, and and we disbelieve other things, and we get to disbelieving so much that we find it hard to believe. And so we've got to realize that believing is what we've got to do as Christians, so that we can be successful, that we can be. Um, able to do what God wants us to do. We've got to believe. Uh, John 7, 38 says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's my fourth sermon I wanted to get on this living water. I'm going to stop right there tonight. <clears throat> I've said I believe what God wants me to say. And I hope that I've said it in a way 
that you can understand the importance of what we say. What we say really makes a difference. And remember this. When God speaks to you about these things, you're not going to perfect yourself overnight. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. I mean, we still make mistakes. But we head down the right track, going the right way, and then we start increasing our momentum, and then we get things that are going, and God's able to do more and more and more. So we've got to get in that. We've done so many things right here. And I am so pleased. I am so proud. And I sense the unity that we have. And I see that we need to keep moving forward in the right direction. And what is the right direction? The right direction is what the Word of God is saying. Amen. Now, if Dale Henson says it, that's one thing. And that's not necessarily the Word of God. But if I read the Word of God... And it is the word of God. You listen to what the word says. The word is what counts. If I'm up here preaching, our pastor's up here preaching, and it doesn't line up with the word of God, we all need to have a talk to somebody. You need to talk to me. You need to talk to brother. Whatever, whoever's ministering up here, we need to follow the word of God so that we can be effective witnesses, so that we can be effective in evangelism. And before you build anything, you've got to have a good foundation. The foundation has to be right. If the foundation is cracked here and there, you're going to have a building that falls. And that's the reason why I know God's given me the, these messages. Um, I know that ever since I've been here, I've been mostly teaching and but that's what God's wanting me to do right now. And I I have learned so much myself over the last five, ten, five to ten years. And I just want to share it all. And there's a limited amount of time. There's uh, but <clears throat> key point. Believe. 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 Get rid of that doubt. Now, it's not easy to do. I mean, when you've got an old shoulder that's saying, owie, it's hard to believe. When you've got a, got a joint out of place in your hip, it's, it's hard. When you've got pain that, and I know, I know you're on, all of you've had some big pain. I know every one of you have. Uh, you've all had some, well, maybe not Sheila. Sheila might be okay. She might have never had anything. I don't know. What she, uh, we haven't talked about that. But I know the rest of us, have. we've had some real pain. And, and when you have that real pain, that's when the rubber meets the road. And am I perfect at it? No. Don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect. But what I'm telling you is what God's been telling me, and I'm just relaying the message to you. But I have been, I've had fever blisters two or three years ago. I was getting them all the time. I'm not today. And I've rebuked that. And I've stopped it. But it's called believing and receiving and not doubting but that's not an easy thing to do I, I, you know whatever your situation you've got to you got to work it out you got to work it out and God will help you to work it out you know where you need to be and you've got to start in and you've got to work your way there and you don't take somebody that's been on when medicines a day, and I don't say, hey, John Doe, you stop taking that 20 medicines a day because that's a sin. That's wrong. Now, if God, I can say, 
you'll be better off without medicine. But John Doe over here, if he stops taking that medicine because I told him to, he's got a problem. Now, if John Doe stops taking that medicine because he feels like the Lord has said, yeah, it's time for you to stop. You can do it. I'm going to help you do it. Then he can stop. But he don't stop because Dale Henson told him to. And that's the same with all of us. We need to be careful that we don't tell people to do things that God didn't tell us to tell them to do. I've, I've had many words given to me in the past that was supposedly from the Lord, but I don't think they were from the Lord. And so, you know, that's why we have the discerning of spirits. And you can know when things are right and when they're not and let the Holy Spirit talk to you and deal with you and get things together. Can we stand? Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the words that you put in my mouth tonight and know that they're words that you wanted me to say. I ask, Lord, that every heart here this evening would understand what I'm trying to say, that you would put this together in their mind, that you would help them to be able to believe and to be able to receive be able to not doubt. Help us to be able to pray correctly. Help us to think about what we're saying. Help us to think about what we're doing. And help us to understand the importance of those people that we come into contact every day that don't know you and they're going to be in a devil's hell if we don't do something about it. Help us, Lord, be able to spread that word, help us to take advantage of every moment that we have, every moment that we have with somebody that doesn't know you, help us to be able to say the right words to help them to understand the way to victory, the way to heaven, the way to spend eternal life with you. We praise you, we love you, we thank you for each one here tonight, Lord. We praise you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless y'all. Um.